It had been lovely being the sunshine for a while and catching up with family, but we were both itching to get back on Tailey and start our adventure. And after pretty much every form of transport later, we were definitely back in the UK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Tailey. Which looks alright. Five degrees there, and now this. Such a great feeling. Oh. That was a crazy, <laughs> crazy journey with the Harbour Master. Yeah. He was so lovely. He was just chatting to us about where to go and our future travels. And yeah, he was actually finishing work as we caught him. So it was really lovely. He... Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yeah, thanks, Paul. <laughs> so quiet and lovely. We just had to get a, tr a train, which was delayed. And then a lightning strike hit the control box. And then so all the other <laughs> trains were cancelled for the day. It's been mental. I'm, s I'm sorry for everyone who's going to Falmouth. Yeah, that really sucks. And then we just had to get a taxi ride and a boat ride. <laughs> but we're back and we're better than ever. Right, let's unpack. Yeah. <laughs> we're Becca and Zach, a couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40 foot Colvick Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs <laughs> shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Tailey. Bloody doing it. It has just started thundering and it is bucketing it down and Zach is out there somewhere with the food shopping. <laughs> it's a 45 minute walk to town and he's got two massive bags of food shopping and he's still got to walk back and he's got to get in a dinghy and come back but it is like a storm out there. wettest shop I've ever done in my life. I was absolutely peeing it down at one point. The boat is very full of water. I want to get back and have a cup of tea. Walking three miles in the pouring rain isn't too bad but it's not that nice when it's a bit cold. Oh my gosh. Now it clears up, at least it wasn't too bad for that bit. <laughs> that was crazy. It's a bit later now, I think it's about 12 o'clock and it's higher tide now and the sun has come out which is lovely, the wind is still quite high but we're going to leave the pontoon that we're on and we're going to take the boat up to the main pontoon and we're going to fill up our water tanks, might have a shower, might pop into town from there to get some more fuel for the dinghy and then we are going to come back down the river and anchor for the night um, or two. We'll have to just see. But yeah, it's pretty windy, so might be a little spicy, but it'll be alright. Just gonna let that off, yeah? Yep. And then just bow, then bow thruster us out. It might even be the case of if you just bow thruster us out enough, the wind will take us and we can just go. Yeah, you sure we're not gonna get too close to that? No, I think, I think we'll be fine. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just bow for us around. Because the wind will start taking us, and then as soon as we're in a good position there, I mean, we're just going to go. Oh, such a lovely manoeuvre. 
Honestly, we just, oh, it's great. <laughs> As we came in, we suddenly realised there's a lot of small boats over there and it was really shallow so we had to do kind of just a spin here and quite fine the dock was a lot smaller than it was so I was planning on where I was going to put the lines on and then suddenly I was like, oh no, the dock's so much shorter than our boat and as I leant over, the line went in the water, I went over to grab it and the bow thruster got caught and came off into the water so I can't even reach it and grab it and my knees are all wet but it's fine and we are That was quite stressful. We are finally anchored, but it took us three attempts and the wind is gusting. I don't even know what it's gusting because our windex just isn't working properly, but it's gusting a lot and yeah, that was really quite stressful. But the anchor's finally holding. We tried two other places and the anchor didn't hold. We were just being blown sideways down the river, <sighs> but we're fine. And we're now holding. We're kind of in the middle of the river now, <laughs> but the wind's coming head on right now and this is as sheltered as we can get, but yeah, that wasn't too fun. We had so many good manoeuvres back there, but it's gusting so hard. Some people up there are really struggling to get a mooring boy and I'm thinking about how I can go and help, but I don't think I really can. I think I'll just put myself in danger. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm happy that we're finally holding. But that was quite the quite the anchor experience. Okay, Zach's gonna go over for So it's a little bit later now and the wind has finally dropped a little bit which is so nice and now I've said that the wind's picked up again. Zach's just in the dinghy, I'm just taking a break from editing, it's about 6pm um, but we've been invited over to Mike's boat, Venetian, um, with Bosun, the white samoyed dog, the really fluffy one. Oh they're so cute, we saw him earlier when we were filling up with water. Sorry I'm just going to multitask and put my shoes on at the same time. And he invited us over to see his catch and his doggo is so cute, he's only a year old. So, yeah, we're gonna pop over there now and say hi. Hopefully the wind drops. It's not very nice leaving the boat when it's, when it's windy, but yeah, Zach's calling me, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> hey, who's driving? Hi. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> we have cruise control on. <laughs> oh, it's almost going. Ha <laughs> ha 
Hi. Oh, it's a lovely boat. Oh, thank you. We were admiring your immersed furling oh. as we came up. We were like, ooh, that's nice. Um, you're so cute. Come here. You're so cute. Get on the lead if you miss it. He's usually very excited when I think it's the most similar boat to ours that we've been on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's... Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, I love your boat. It looks fantastic. So, yeah. I've not seen one before. It's really nice being on another catch because obviously we've yeah. been we've been on a, quite a few boats since we've got ours, but actually not many catches. It's just like ours. That's so cool. It is so similar. I love it. Oh, this is cool. This storage. Wow. And an internal so helm. Yeah. Hi. Oh, look at him. <laughs> It's so cute! <laughs> oh just got back and it is dark. <laughs> it's so bizarre, but Mike, if you're watching this, you're a legend. Your boat is so lovely and Boatswain is so cute. It was so lovely to see a catch just like ours, but with a twist, a little bit different. Um, giving us lots of great ideas for improvements and upgrades we can have in the future. Oh yeah. Why does it have to rain? There's a dog on board. Hey, Bosun. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Don't jump down. <laughs> you fluffy polar bear. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Good luck. Zach has gone to go get some fuel for the dinghy. The closest place is a fuel garage up in Truro. So he's gonna go up the river <laughs> as far as he can because he's almost out of fuel, row the rest of the way, which is pretty stupid considering how windy it is, but we've got no other choice. I wanted to go, um, but the dinghy won't play with both of us and we can't risk not getting there. So I'm here hanging out in the crazy wind. Yeah, fun times. Michael from Venetian, the guy we met yesterday with his dog Bosun, just dropped round and really lovely. He gave us the North Brittany and Channel Islands cruising guide, which is really lovely. To Zach and Becca, fair winds and happy sailing. Best wishes, Michael and Bosun on yacht Venetian. So that's really nice. We've got some light reading to do for the next few days while we just wait out here until we can finally cross the channel. Thanks, Michael. It was a mission success. I'm just gonna try and avoid not rounding out now. Whoa. So the sun has come out, it's still really rainy and windy, but there is a bit of sun now, so we're gonna brave the outdoors. I'm getting Wild cabin fever on board because I haven't left the boat in two days. So, yeah, we're gonna he take the dinghy, head to the marina. I think there's some showers there, so we're gonna have a shower, go for a little wander. Um, the harbour master just dropped by and charged us for the night because you don't have to pay in this anchorage. He collected all our rubbish and she brought us a little parcel, which was lovely. Is this a look? <laughs> I'm wearing shorts, but my jacket's too long, so you can't see them. And I'm wearing sandals because we were just gonna get so wet anyway, we thought. You know what, let's just fully commit and wear sandals. Beat the rain. It's finally sunny. We've cut the engine and it's so peaceful. That's so nice. Yeah, that sounds like running water. Yeah, down there there's a waterfall. Is that? No.
mind having our little sink kettle washes on the boat. Something about a proper shower that you just can't beat. See, so yeah, that's so nice. And now we've cooked a curry, so we're going to head back and have our little curry. And I think we're going to watch the new Game of Thrones because we've got great Wi Fi here. Well, not Wi Fi, we've got a little dongle. So we've got great 3G here. And yeah, time to watch the new series. Crazy. This is what our anchor has been doing. So we've moved, but not too much. That's our radius that we don't want to move out of. This morning, I'm going to be going through the engine and changing out a few of the filters. I've got the fine particle filter, which is the last filter before the engine. And then I've got the initial filters here. So we've got two of the RF1013 filters. I'm gonna change out both of them, even though I'm fairly sure we've just been using one, but I don't know what the previous owner was doing with it. So I'm just gonna change out both to be sure, because they're not too expensive, these things anyway. And then I'm gonna fit this one as well. So I need to go and turn off the fuel to the filters at the moment. Make sure I don't get covered in fuel. And then um, I need to unscrew these, take both of these off, fit these new ones, and then same with these, and same with this one. And when I fit this one, I need to make sure that I smear some fuel around the seal there before putting it back on to give it a really good seal. We have a bit of a story about our engine servicing bits. We had messaged Stuart from Great Oost Boat Services a week before leaving Mayflower to buy some bits from him, but due to courier delays, the parts weren't going to arrive in time for our departure. Oh yeah, there's some crap in that. Yeah. Yeah. This is when Stuart informed us that he was on his way, in his car, driving four hours to hand deliver them to us. We honestly couldn't believe it and can't even explain how grateful for him we are. We've left his website below as he is hands down a fantastic chap and we would 100% recommend his services. Can you do me a favour please? Yeah. Could you um, get me a 16 millimeter spanner? Nice one, thank you. <laughs> None of these were 16 that you gave me but the 14 fits. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. That's all right. So I just drained that of all the, or purged that of all the air. I can't see any leaks on here, so I think that's all good. I'll probably come back to this later just to double check that nothing is dripping anywhere or anything, but looks pretty good. I've done the two primary fuel, fuel, fuel filters on the tanks behind me. They're all done now. What I'm doing now is the fine particle filter on the engine, which is a new one of these. Um, I didn't have one of those belt tools to take these kind of things off, because obviously with a smooth cylinder like this, it's really hard to get off. Oh, let me just turn that up before I lose any more fuel from there. Obviously these ones, it's really hard to get off with just your hands, so I ended up using a ratchet strap like this and a silicon mat like this for a bit of grip, wrapping it around and giving it a pull. Kind of does the same job, but I am looking to get a proper tool at some point because it make it a lot easier. Obviously, before I started taking this all off, I've closed off the fuel system so I don't get all of our fuel running through here because that wouldn't be nice. Just double checking now I have done that. Yeah, I have. Um, all that's left now is to take this old one off completely, smear some fuel around this gasket on this one and then slot it and tighten up on the old position here. This last one wasn't changed since 2019 so it's definitely a bit due. There we go. Oh, hello. Becca, I'm going to be a pain as well. Yeah. Can I have the saucepan as well? It's not a saucepan we cook out of, it's a horrible one that we've got for this kind of stuff. It's not the easiest thing to get in now. This one was slightly wider than that fuel filter. Really? 
Yeah, like the it, it fits exactly the same, but this is a like a skinnier one. What the one we've got? It's really hard to get in. Yeah. Weird. I don't know if they just changed the design, but I scraped off a tiny bit of paint on here. Don't worry. And now all I need to do is bleed some air from the system just to make sure there's nothing in there. Well, I will be asking you to turn the fuel back on and then bleed it until I'm just getting a little bit of fuel coming through there and then we'll be all good. There we go, lovely. 0922, yeah? Yeah. Just wiped off all of the gunk that was around here just to make sure that there was no rust on it and there isn't, it's just mostly been caught in there but you can see the filters obviously been doing its job because it's horrible in that one and then the other one which we haven't used as much if i can find it what would have been the issue if it had rust on it it means we don't have water in the system which we don't but you can see how much cleaner that one is because that one hasn't been used as much yeah and then that's the really horrible one yeah okay cool good, good job so we've just done the fuel filters and it's just started torrential raining. Zach's in the dinghy, sheltering under the solar panel at the moment. Oh, the rain makes everything so difficult. Oh my gosh, it's really raining. Bless him, look at him. <laughs> He's just sheltering. Oh, I look a bit windswept, but the harbour master just came on his little boat and they're so lovely here, I guess it's what you pay for um, but he takes our rubbish away and we had some diesel because Zach's just changed the fuel filters and he took the diesel away and he mentioned tomorrow there's a big ship coming in to take away scrap metal so he we have to be away from this area by then which is fine because I think we're going to head around to St Moore's as, as long as we're sheltered enough um, if not we might then I guess maybe head to the Halford or somewhere else um, but yeah, I think we're going to head off this river. Um, but he said the best name for the boat, yeah, and that is Tielu. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. I think we'll kind of keep a track of all the different pronunciations because it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? We've had Tulu, Tue, now Tuelu, we've had Te, we've had Tu, we've had all sorts. So yeah, Tulu. We don't really mind. We don't mind at all, actually. But yeah, just a bit of, bit of fun hearing the different pronunciations. Wobbly, 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 wobbly. Oh, fresh air. Oh, no. It is still raining, but. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, slightly. Oh, oh. As it wasn't every day that we were anchored in a river, we took the gap in the rain to explore further up the creek. The sun's come out. It's so nice, finally. For like five minutes and then it'll rain again. But as with all drying ground, we had to do some maths to ensure we wouldn't be walking back. Trying to figure out the the depth and high tide is three meters twenty-two and this is a plus two point seven meters out of the water. So Zach is just testing it with a paddle now to see. Yeah. Yeah, we're fine. Um, because the last thing we want to do is get stuck up here. And despite us being very thorough, it still didn't prevent this from happening. Wait, yeah, we... Look at it. Look how shallow we are. Wait, we ran aground? Yeah. Oh, crap. It's all right. It's super silty. That was not meant to happen. No. Well, at least we know what it's like to run aground, eh? This is 0.9 here, I thought. That's why I think it's a no, it says, bit. it says plus six. We just run aground in the dinghy for the first time. <laughs> Did not expect that at all. This said it was... It should have been about at least half a metre to a metre. Oh, it's so shallow underneath us. You would not expect that. You wouldn't expect it at all. Weird. I thought I had a few metres still. Over there's, over there's deeper, Zach. Well, we now we've... Really now we've... After swapping the engine for the oars, we still made the most of the creek and all its creepy abandoned boats. Oh, That's crazy. It's so wide though, we never expected it to be quite this wide for a small creek. It goes 
goes so far as well. It's like a graveyard for boats, isn't it? Whoa. It's literally like a meadow in here. It's definitely snapped off. Oh, it's so creepy in there. Whoa. Wow, look at that. You know what you get? I love them, I love them. But you need your white jacket, Megan. Oh, it's definitely about to float again. Really? I think so. Oh, there's a crab in here! Is there? What the heck? What, alive? I don't know, should we try and get him out? Definitely dead. Oh no, he's alive! I'm going to pick him up so I can get him out. Right. Oh, bless him. He's attacking! Me. Is he one of the red crazy ones? No, but he's really going for me. Ow, he's attacking me with his back pinchers too. He's picking him up. Come on. Ah! Oh, he's quite big. Ow, he's attacking the back of me. Okay, got I rescued a little crab from inside the boat. He's probably got a wife and children in there. <laughs> After a few more stops in interesting looking beaches. Oh, really? No, it's an anchor. We made our way back to Tailey, and as if the clouds knew, they threw down all they had. Thanks for watching. Next week, we are picking up anchor and moving somewhere with a bit more civilization in preparation for our next big sail.